This is Cameron, welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today we are gonna look at how to plant and grow cherries in a warm climate. Let's get busy. So when you think of uh, planting stuff in warmer climates, tropical climates, you think of things like uh, passion fruit or banana or, or even um, subtropicals like avocado and orange and citrus and other kinds of stuff. Something that is always elusive though are things like cherries, a lot of those stone fruit. Um, those often have been outside of the realm of, of southern growers because they require a certain number of what are called chill hours. And those chill hours are, are those hours that a tree is experiencing between 32, I think 42 or 45 degrees. Um, and they have to experience a certain number of those because what it does is it breaks down um, a hormone that keeps a tree dormant. And essentially that lets a tree know to uniformly open up and flower. And as you probably know, you want all of those flowers open at the same time. So that way you get a very uniform crop. And that, so there have up until this point been very poor yields with different types of stone fruit and those and poem fruit like apples and that um, that need a certain number of chill hours. But in recent years, they have developed a number of what they call low chill varieties of things, um, of trees. Those that don't require as many chill hours in order for those buds to develop, for them to all flower uniformly and then give you a very consistent and reliable crop of fruit. Um, you know, as the climate does heat up, that's going to create just more and more of an issue or a wider and wider swath of our you know continent is going to need something that's lower chill in order to produce consistently so you're not going to believe it but in our climate here in southern california we are able to grow cherries come over here i want to show you something kids and family have already picked off most of these these are two um staples in southern california the mini royal and royal lee cherries and they have been developed by uh, zager um, genetics to grow and work in a low chill environment. So you can't see a ton of them now because- There's one. That one's not ripe though. I want to eat a ripe one. Come on. Oh, ripe right one, okay. Okay, look around here real quick. Oh wow, look at that. Okay, this is perfect. This is a perfect, I think this is, which one of the two trees is this? This is mini royal. Here, Kyle, you enjoy that one. Oh wow, thank you. There you go. I love cherries. Look at that, cherries in Southern California. Mm. What do you think? Delicious. Delicious. Mm. Firm, sweet, flavorful, everything you'd want in a cherry growing here in Southern California. Something that they noticed though with mini royal and royal lee cherries is that it takes a few years for the blooms to get in sync with each other. Um, it's important because they have to cross pollinate like lots of other varieties of different things do. And so those blooms need to be open at the same time. So that way a, a bee comes and gets pollen from one tree and hops two feet over to the next tree. But if there's no bloom over there for it to land on, then um, it's not gonna be able to pollinate the fruit. So what they have found is that it takes several years for these to get in sync but something that they they developed and zager developed recently is this thing called a royal crimson cherry and that's what i have here today now the royal crimson is another low chill variety um but what it, they found is that it blooms kind of in between mini royal and royal lee and serves as a bridge to get more um pollinating ability for those two trees so by putting this in the combo with these other two, I should expect to see way better yields. We had pretty good yield this year, and I imagine next year would be even better. But putting this Royal Crimson in to serve as a bridge and getting the fruit on this thing is just gonna seal us for, um, for really consistent fruiting. So now I need to figure out how do I take and plant this new tree in an established planting like this? Um, well, there are a few considerations that I need to think about is you can see the size of this, especially once it's in the ground, is only gonna be about knee high when I make my pruning cuts. And 
we want this, we don't want this to be sitting way out by itself. So the question is, do I want to put this on the southern facing side where it's going to be able to get um, some additional sunlight you know, during the season so it's not being shaded out by this, but then run the risk of it growing out into this area? It would also mean if I did that, I would have to cut these two trees back a bit in order to make room for it. Um, it's going to treat, this is now the center of the center of the planting, and so I'd need to clear this whole area out. Come with me around the corner here, and let's see if this side makes a little bit more sense. Now this is where I originally was going to plant a third cherry. It's kind of in this nook over here. This gives it lots of room to come out here. It doesn't impede really a walkway. There's a little less foliage right here. And so I'm, I'm just not quite sure what to do. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to plant it on this side. It's going to take a little while longer for this to, to grow in vigor and get tall enough to really start booming. But I think longer term, this is going to make more sense. And I'm going to cut back some of the foliage so that way it's able to get some sun. It also is going to get some afternoon sun as the sun comes up this way and goes that way. It should be unimpeded, especially during the warmer months. So I think this is going to end up being my planting spot roughly right here. Now I need to just clear out some of this area, eat some of those cherries that are on there, prune some of this back and get digging. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is make sure that I'm clearing this area out so that way I make room for this cherry to go right up into it. So it's tough to come in on an established tree and go, oh, I'm just gonna chop a bunch out of it, but that's what we're doing. Everything that's gonna be, everything that's gonna be going into the middle, remember where I'm standing now here, is going to be the middle of the planting. So anything that you see in front of me needs to go because that's where this tree is gonna be standing. So otherwise it's gonna be growing into the now new tree. So some of the things that I would have left before are now gonna be pruned off. Oh. Okay, there's some cherries on here, grab a cherry. Mm. They're not even 100% ripe and they're so good. So sweet, here, have another. Mm. Thank you. That one's kind of a little malformed one. Hey, there's some down there. Mm. Arr. <laughs> the bounty is ripe today. <laughs> Usually you're not literally eating it off the tree. <laughs> In this case I was. Eating them like grapes. Mm hmm Man, there's so much growing over here. All right, man, look at that little clump under there. These are the ones that my kids and wife didn't find, and I'm <laughs> fine that they didn't find it, because I like, oh, I like eating Ooh. them. Here, I got over here. <laughs> oh, thank you. I wonder how many people are gonna say they'll never watch this channel again after you decimated these cherry cheese. I know, it looks so bad. Look at this, just to come and chop, chop away all this stuff. Like, look, look, look at the ground. These were happy cherries, they were producing and yet you came in. Yeah, I was just reminiscing about somebody who called me a butcher for cutting uh, jujube down low and that thing's so happy. You saw it a second ago, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks so happy and so, hey, it's about being principled with this stuff. All right, now look at what a look at what a different situation this is here. All of this area now I'm I'm creating a situation where as this royal crimson cherry goes in, it's going to be able to totally branch out and grow out in this direction. If I have to come through later and clean some other stuff up, take out any competing branches I may do it. This one may end up coming out, but I want to just see what the growth habit of this thing is. All right, now what I need to do is. Uh, now that we've got our open space here, solidly open space, I'm actually happy with this. I was really intimidated by making these cuts, but I think it looks really good. And so now we need to dig a hole, get that puppy in the ground, put some mulch on it, water it in, and we're gonna be done. So on these two cherries, you notice they're planted about three feet apart from this trunk to this trunk. And when you do this multi-planting, as you've maybe seen in my other videos, what we're trying to do is treat each tree almost as a branch of a tree. So imagine that this is just one tree and you're gonna prune it based on each of these trees being a branch. Um, so I'm gonna create kind of a triangle. This is about where I want my 
new tree to be. Oh, have I mentioned that we have rocks here? <laughs> Gee whiz. I'm trying to preserve some of the mulch here. This will make it easier to just throw it back on top. Look at this. Look at this. Right beneath the surface. Holy that thing cow. is huge. So there is the possibility or the likelihood I should say. Oh my gosh. There's a likelihood that we're chopping through some roots of this cherry um, in order to make room for this new one. So it's not gonna hurt it. It's not going around the entire thing or girdling it in some way. It's just kind of almost like pruning off a branch. We're just pruning off essentially a few pieces of root. I'll tell you what, having a very solid shovel has been indispensable in this yard. Being able to leverage out those rocks um, has been the biggest benefit of this, this uh, particular shovel. Fiskers, they call this the best shovel in the world. I agree. Okay, now something that I've been doing more and that you should do too, is as you're planting, you wanna plant higher up, higher than grade a little bit, um, because there's always gonna be some settling that happens and you don't want the graft especially to ever go beneath the, the soil level. We're gonna be mounding up soil around it. We're gonna be putting mulch around it. And that's gonna help for many, many things. Watch my mulch video for that info. Um, so what I wanna do now is first, I wanna just look at the plant and get an idea of placement. You wanna think through where, where are the buds growing and we want them growing out in this area. So if I see, let's say I wanted this to continue growing, I wouldn't aim this in toward the middle of the tree, you know, the grouping, because now then this is gonna grow in there. What I want to do is I wanna aim this out. Probably gonna make my pruning cut just above that to encourage this one to go out and kind of be one of our main scaffold limbs. So. This looks good. This gives me an idea of how it's going to go. Now what we want to do is carefully break the sides of the, of the pot up. And then just kind of supporting this thing, kind of wiggle. You don't want to yank the, the trunk out. You just want to guide it out. Support it. And like with any new planting, you wanna see the direction of the, of the roots. If the roots are swirling in any way, you definitely wanna break them up. So that way they're going out instead of creating kind of a root bound situation. I always like to break up the sides. So that way these feeders start aiming and you know, going into the soil around it as opposed to keeping the shape of the pot. And this is pretty loose material as it is. So I don't wanna to do too much and have the whole thing come apart in my hand. All right, so. Slightly above grade. Um, we're gonna, once we start putting some soil in and backfilling, I'm going to make sure that this is going straight or even angled out a little bit if I need to. Um, okay, this looks ready to backfill. It's interesting how the soil in this area of the orchard is a lot higher quality. It's got more organic material in it. it versus some of these other areas is just silt. You yeah. can't even, were we doing that with the blueberry? Mm -hmm. Just trying to find some soil and it just wasn't even, it wasn't doing anything. It was just running off. Water would just run off. Whereas here it's got that organic material in. Okay, now before we kind of tamp this in, we want to look over the top of it and you want to see over the top what direction this is facing. If anything, you want to err on the side of it aiming away from the from the other trees. We're not keeping these so high, I'm not letting it get 30 feet where a lean is gonna be very pronounced. We're keeping these short, so leaning it slightly away. We're likely gonna have some leaf drop on this. It's gonna be a little bit stressed because it's out of dormancy and the root ball was disturbed a little bit. So if I get some leaf drop this first season, I'm not gonna freak out about it. It's to be expected. Um, but we, we hope that that doesn't happen. Now, looking over the top, this looks pretty good. This is going out from the center of the planting. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some mulch over the top of it. Mulch again is going to help to regulate the soil temperatures. It's gonna keep the moisture in the ground. Um, as the sun beats on it, it's not gonna dry that out. It's gonna help to avoid those extremes that hurt plants. Um, and it just looks better. No, but as that stuff breaks down, a solid layer of it, it's gonna continue to feed and enrich the soil beneath it. So a good two, four to six inches of mulch is what we're looking for. Something also to remember is you wanna keep the mulch, hey bug, you wanna keep the mulch and everything, all the soil away from the trunk of the tree. So that way you don't get any of that uh, crown rot. Okay, well this looks like a good healthy bit of mulch. It'll be refreshed later. All right, two final things to do. One is to cut this down to where I want it to be. And then the other is to water it in and then we'll be done. Come close, I wanna show you what we're looking for here. So this is very obvious. We have a branch that's already going out, but also I'm looking for these buds. As I make a cut, we're wanting to encourage these other side, these lower buds to start sending out branches. And so if you look close here, here's a bud with some leaves on it. This would ideally turn into another branch. This one below it would be turned into another branch. And I may actually get rid of this stake. I don't know if it needs to be staked. And that will hopefully create space for those other buds to go out of the side. I may actually cut the stake off of this thing so then I can make my pruning cut. All right. All right, well that showed us that this thing wanted to, wanted to flip back, so. Okay, this makes it a lot easier to see what we're doing. I'm gonna make my pruning cut. We usually wanna make them about knee high, but um, I noticed that this scaffold right here is a little bit higher, so I'm gonna go about, whatever, about knee high. <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut this one back because I want this to turn into an outer facing bud. And that way it'll create some balance for the trees. I want, I want it to say, uh oh, I need to keep growing some of these other buds and encourage some of that other stuff. This just has to get watered in and now we're planted. You know, low chill varieties are accessible. Um, it makes it possible for somebody to plant stone fruit in climates where you wouldn't otherwise think that you could. You always think of cherries or some of these other stone fruit as being these really northern, northern uh, environments. And yet there's so many options available now. So if you're looking for something and if you're in a warmer climate like I am here, we only get two, three, four hundred maybe maximum chill hours here. Um, in the foothills of the San Gabriel Valley in Southern California. But they have varieties that can do that sort of thing. These Mini Royal and Royal Lee, they're looking two, 300 chill hours. And that's accessible to many, many people versus the eight or 900 chill hours that are sometimes required for some of these other varieties. I don't even know what the varieties are that do <laughs> that need that because we can't plant them here. I never looked into them. So go check out your nursery. DaveWilson.com is a great website to be able to find which are low chill varieties. You've got a whole area to look for those things. We've had so much success in our orchard with low chill varieties of different things. And um, it's totally worth it. So thanks so much for tuning into this episode of The Busy Gardener. If you haven't yet subscribed, why don't you do that now? Hit that subscribe button. It's the color of a cherry and uh, <laughs> there's a little bell next to it. Hit that too so you know when I put up new videos. And thanks so much for tuning in. What questions do you have? What successes have you had? Have you planted a Royal Crimson and had any luck with it? I'd love to hear your experience with it. Hey, whether you've got one low chill variety in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy.